enjoy coming out doing all the autographs like this? Well, sometimes, uh, you know, if it's, well, I don't, I don't sign at too many shows, so uh, it's good because uh, I have fun with the kids and kid around with them. So yeah, it's it's okay. So they remember you though as a as a great legend, or do they just know you from? Uh... Oh, I don't think they remember. They weren't even born yet. I think it's just their their fathers or family or. For some reason, they maybe they read about it or saw a film or something. But um, you know, I just have fun with them and kid around with them. I know now you do the Bears broadcast uh, for a radio or TV. And w what players do you when you watch them? What do you think? Uh, what players can compare to the way you played back then? Uh, well, I, I don't do the radio anymore for the Bears, but uh, I think Zorich has the. Uh, maybe not quite the ability, but he plays with a lot of desire, and that's what I tried to do. Uh, other than that, uh, there's not too many of them. I don't think uh, they play, but I don't think uh, they show really the enthusiasm and the desire, uh, but he does. What were the players like the toughest ones you ever had to face in your career? Well, uh, tough as far as what? I mean, they were people, I mean, big guys. They could throw th throw people around, and just they were really dominating out there, like yourself. Well, all you got to do is look at who's in the Hall of Fame, really. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody just stood out over everybody else. I think the competition was pretty good, and uh, they checked the Hall of Fame. Those are the guys. Now, do you enjoy like the technology of today with uh, you know that eye in the sky and all that kind of stuff? Do you like that, or do you like it just on the field with the coaches and the players? Well, uh, doesn't make any difference to me because it uh, uh, doesn't concern me anymore. Uh, game's advancing, and you can't stop that. So if it's uh, if it's supposed to be uh, a help and have the people play better or whatever. I don't, I, I'm not so sure it does, but maybe they think it does. Uh, uh, so that, that's really that's really the technology and everything. It's, you know, everything is getting to be like specialized now and certain players for certain downs and situations, and that's just the way they're going. And you know, the Rams are in St. Louis. Do you think they'll be any better with the move, or is it is it a big deal? Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, I could only th think that with a change of uh, coaching staff, uh, they have to. There has to be a different attitude. Uh, whether or not they're going to be any good, you know, they, they're showing a lot of excitement here with the Rams, but uh, they certainly didn't win the Super Bowl last year. But a thing in their favor is that the town seems to be supporting them, and with a new coaching staff, uh, maybe it'll inject some enthusiasm, and then, you know, maybe they'll play a little bit above their heads and because uh, I don't think they're a real threat as they are now so uh, but some improvement be more uh, uh, more than they showed last year with it for in Anaheim. Now we, we know that you're an entertainer did you always want to be an entertainer or is that something that you got to do since being a football player? Well no I you know I don't consider myself an entertainer it's just uh, opportunities came and uh, when they asked to do some things, so I just go ahead and, and, and try to do them. Uh, I'm not an entertainer. No. Anything we'll see you next? Is there any uh, projects coming up for you? No, not really. Uh, it's just that it's hard to, to try to juggle all my other things, what I do, and I just can't uh, sit at home, wait for a phone call to do an acting role, but if something comes along and there's and the time is, uh, is open, then I go ahead and do it. That's why I say I'm not going after it 100%. I just take what they, uh, whatever they call, and if I'm not doing anything else, uh, then I go ahead and do it. Well, we thank you a lot, and it's nice to see you again. Thanks a lot. With John Madden of the Fox NFL team, we haven't seen you in St. Louis for, what, about eight, nine years now? When's the last time you've been here? The last time I was here was 1981, and uh, so that was a long time ago, so it's nice to be back. What do, you, what do you think of the changes in the dome and everything else? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of glad that this game isn't being played in the dome because I think the game uh, really stands for itself. I mean, this is a big game. I mean, the Rams have been the biggest surprise in the National Football League this year, and I think, you know, the 49ers, the defending world champions coming in, 
I think that the game can stand on its own. And I think if it were the first game in the new stadium, you'd have to be saying, this is the first kickoff in the new stadium. This is the first touchdown scored in the new stadium. And this game is big enough that it doesn't need a new stadium. What do you think of the Rams so far, 5-1 and one at the time of this interview? I think it's great. I mean, I think that's one of the biggest and best stories in the NFL. I mean, there's been... Uh, too long the 49ers have been in a division with no competition and I think that if there was no one that would say that you know after six or seven weeks the Rams are going to be in first place the 49ers are going to be tied with Atlanta for second place and I think that's a great thing about football because if we if everyone knew what was going to happen and it happened anyway this would be a boring thing but because no one knows the Rams are going to be there, and then they come and they do this. Everyone says, geez, I never thought. Of course you didn't think, but that's good. So you spent the day with them today. Well, what's the attitude, and what do you think of their uh, team chemistry so far? Well, I think that success breeds success, and, uh, and, you know, they have it, and, you know, you can't have confidence until you win. You know, and then you win, and then that gets confidence, and you can see that, this is a team that, that has a lot of confidence now, and it has confidence from having been successful, and they believe, and I think that they feel that they have a great opportunity against the 49ers. I enjoy doing this, coming, going to city to city like this on bus, because we know that you, you don't like to fly, so you have the Madden Cruiser outside. What, what's that like, going from city to city? Yeah, I love it. Uh, you know, that's the, the whole part of it. I mean, you know, the travel, going across the country. I just came from California. Uh, we'll go to Atlanta next week and then back to California again. And I love that part of it. And I love, you know, going to practice and watching film and talking to players and coaches and, and of course, doing the games on Sunday. That's it, it's great. I mean, you can't, if you're looking for something to do, you can't beat this. I mean, I've, I've been lucky in my life. I've never had a job. John, thanks a lot. It's great to see you in St. Louis. Hope you come back again. Okay, thank you. All right, we're in John Madden's bus. We figured we'd take you around. This is the Madden Cruiser. He doesn't like to fly, as you heard in the interview. So let's see what is in John Madden's bus. Got the nice couch here, the phone there. Got the beautiful stuff. Here's the driver. Got some food. Got the microwave. Supposed to be a nice job for you. Yeah, it is. Great job. Yeah, love do you, it. Do you do this all the time? Or? Yep. Yep. Take them all, all over the place, right? All over the place. Is that the private quarters back there? Private again? quarters here. That's <laughs> nice. Well, thanks a lot for letting us in here. With former 49er coach Bill Walsh, welcome back to St. Louis. Uh, I guess it was a successful trip for you guys today. Well, it was a fun trip. I've enjoyed it. We love the city, and it's a marvelous group of people. And it was uh, it was to be a great game, but I think the 49ers at this point are just a little bit better than uh, the Rams. So you're a special assistant now for them. Well, what does uh, that position do, or you just just uh, help carry the equipment? Really? Yeah. So you still root for the 49ers, big 49er fan? Sure, I always will. What do you think of this team compared to the ones that you uh, managed to coach before with uh, the Joe Montana? Well, we'll have to see, but uh, I think they're a world championship team. And Graybeck, as a uh, backup, he looked very quality backup. I like him very much. I think he has a terrific future. I really do. Do you think you're going to be done? Are you done coaching now, or do you think you're going to maybe try something else, another endeavor? No, no, I'm just, uh, I'm just a spectator with the 49ers and enjoy it every week. Thanks. We're with the newest Hall of Famer. Dan Deardorff, congratulations. Uh, Saturday must have been a huge day for you. Tell me what happened uh, when you were in Phoenix Saturday and uh, found out. Well, I was uh, actually riding uh, in a car on my way to my, the airport, uh, to my hotel, rather, and, and Jackie Smith had come and picked us up at the airport. And I knew the announcement was being made. They always make it at noon locally. And, and, and we were trying to get word in the car. Jackie had a phone with him, and he's dialing away and can't get through and, and not getting any satisfaction. And it's now moving towards 1230 out in Phoenix. And I'm thinking to myself, well, nobody's called because nobody wants to be the uh, the bearer of, of bad tidings. And as it worked out, it was uh, actually the uh, 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 dispatcher who called the driver uh, on a, on a two-way radio and, and said, uh, is Mr. Deardorff in the car? And he said, yes. He said, well, tell him he's uh, uh, the newest Hall of Famer. So that's, uh, that's how I found out. So it was, it was uh, traumatic uh, yet exciting. It was a big surprise to you then because we've heard you in interviews where you just said, you know, listen, my peers know that I should be there, so that's all that matters to me. But was it a big surprise for you to find out? Well, I, I'd really pretty much come to grips that, that I wasn't going to get in. I, I convinced myself of that. I 
you know, there's so few voters, you know, that it's only a panel of 36. And, and Jack Buck had, had fought his rear end off uh, you know, and had been doing so for years and, and was kind of like Don Quixote butting up against the windmill, just wasn't getting anywhere. And, you know, so close. I knew I was just one, you know, one or two votes at the most away from getting in. And uh, I don't know if someone saw the light. Uh, I know that I, I know that there was a, a, a slight rearrangement of the voting panel. An old-time member had left, and a, uh, somebody new came in. And uh, maybe, hey, maybe that was just the one vote that I needed. What was the? Uh, do you think the voting process should be changed with the only 36 voters? Because the baseball Hall of Fame, it's kind of different. It's 900. Maybe that's too many. But do you think the football with the 36 should be changed? It would be a little hypocritical of me to uh, say, well, now that I'm in, I think it's just fine. Yes, I, I, I think it. Uh, I think it needs to be addressed by the NFL. I, I, I think it is too few people. Uh, and and it's primarily well it's virtually all sports writers and nothing against my friends uh, in the written media but uh, why should they be the exclusive panel uh, that votes for the hall of fame uh, i think if you asked a lot of the members of the hall of fame they would tell you that if you uh, if you took some writers if you took some people maybe from television although that's not necessary just because i do television more importantly i think you should have some older players on there and i think you should have some coaches Hey, Don Shula, he'd be a great guy to have. I think the coaches, more than anybody else, should be people that would have a, a, a real say-so in who goes in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I mean, let's be serious about it. Who knows better about the qualities and the attributes of various players than the guys who coached them and coached against them? Everybody knows you're a great player. You didn't play on a great team, though. The Cardinals had many years of futility, a couple good ones. But basically, it was tough times for the Cardinals. you think that might be one of the reasons why you may were overlooked? I think that there's a uh, a real tendency to uh, to lean towards players that, that came from Super Bowl teams. Although I, I, I must tell you that it was kind of nice to see this year. I, Charlie Joyner, I don't think, uh, played in a Super Bowl with that wonderful career of his. Uh, I didn't play in a Super Bowl. Uh, uh, Mel Renfro did certainly with the with the Cowboys, and Joe Gibbs, of course, uh, <laughs> won three of them. But it's it used to be that everybody that went in the Hall of Fame, there was like a span of about 10 years that like the only people who got in were, were just the automatics, like an O.J. Simpson and, a, and an Earl Campbell, something like that. Yes, I, I hope that this kind of breaks the dam a little bit. Uh, there are a lot, of awful, a lot of awfully good football players out there who, who didn't play on Super Bowl teams, and uh, you know they should get their due. How many people have you heard from now that maybe you haven't heard from in a long time they're calling you now? Oh, and by God, they are calling me now. You can hear the phone ringing in the background. Uh, uh, I have never talked on the phone so much in my life as uh, as I have the last couple of days. Uh, uh, I have heard from old teammates, old friends, uh, old coaches. Uh, uh, Carmen Policy, the president of the 49ers, just called. Uh, it's it, it's very gratifying. It's very gratifying. Um, so you don't mind it? It's a big deal. You know, it's a big deal. I, I never really allowed myself to really think of what would it be like but it's uh, uh it, it's exciting it's uh, it, it seems to be gaining momentum every day that goes by now, you found out saturday i asked this of jackie smith like the second day he found out when do you plan on writing the speech do you have a, a timetable now or you have any idea what you'd like to say in that speech at all um i think you just have a uh, uh, you have a fear initially of 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 forgetting somebody so I, I think what I'll do is I'll start a, uh, I think I'll start a speech file. And if I, I think of somebody, I'll just throw them in there. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, the, the public speaking part of it's no big deal. I'm not exactly af afraid of a microphone. Um, well, what I'm concerned about is that uh, I, I have no idea how I'll be able to do it and, uh, and keep my emotions uh, in check uh, just because it's, I can't begin to tell you what it means to so many people that I grew up with uh, back home. I, I'm just talking to an old high school friend of mine, and we were on the phone for an hour, just talking about old friends and, and people he's heard from and, and, and that'll be there. I, it's, you have to understand, I grew up literally in the shadow of that building, less than a mile away. My mother said it best, you know, if you cut down the trees, I, c I could see it from here. Was that ever a dream of yours to get in? Did you, like, when you set out, did you say, I want to be a Hall of Fame player? Did you just want to be a good, all-round uh, player? Or did you set your sights? Because you said you live two steps away from the Hall of Fame in Canton, Ohio. Was that a goal that you set as a child? But I, No. No, it was not, because I, 
I, I could possibly have been that foolish to think uh, any 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 dream so grand could possibly come true. You have to understand, uh, this is uh, uh, the the Super Bowl that just finished was the end of the seventy sixth season of the National Football League, and uh, for seventy six years, only the very best uh, of of the best have gotten in the Hall of Fame. I understand that the NFL is made up of, of just a, a very small group of people who played in college, which is a very small group of the people that played in high school. And you think that it all boils down. And, and this league has been here for 76 years, and, and there are less than 200 men in the, in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Now, what child in their right mind, what young man in his right mind could possibly aspire to something like that? I have been in that building, and I have looked at those busts, and, and, and no, I, no, 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 I never thought about it. I thought maybe I'd just be like everybody else. I'd buy a ticket and get in. So did you go to the Super Bowl this year at all? Uh, you know, I went, uh, I went out there because I had some things to do. Uh, uh, I did a dinner for Anheuser Busch Saturday night, and I had something to do on Sunday, and uh, and uh, I flew uh, I flew home while the game was going on. What did you think of the game with the highlights and all that? Well, I, yeah, I I have a VCR. I taped it, <laughs> and I've watched it on tape. Uh, um, you know, Pittsburgh Pittsburgh had a shot to win, and just uh, didn't make uh, didn't make the plays when they had to. And uh, football is a it, it'll never change. Uh, if you make a mistake, it, it ends up costing you. And then, you know, they made a couple of mistakes. Neil O'Donnell floats a ball, and it gets picked off. And uh, he has a receiver that doesn't read a blitz properly, and he throws an interception. It's uh, it's a tough way to lose because they played well, I thought. So you don't blame the whole blame on Neil O'Donnell or other people? No, oh, the second one wasn't Neil O'Donnell's fault at all. That was a blitz adjustment. He threw the ball to a place, and uh, it was obvious to me that uh, his receiver broke to the inside, and uh, he should have broken to the outside. And I thought Neil O'Donnell was pretty classy afterwards. Uh, uh, he was taking the heat for the interception, as a quarterback always does, and he wouldn't, uh, he wouldn't name names. He said, this is a team game, and we're all in it together. Now Dallas has won three out of four now. Is, is this a dynasty, do you think, if they keep winning? Three out of four is pretty good in the 90s with the talent that's out there now. Uh, it, it, it is a dynasty. There's no if ands, or buts about it when you win three out of four. And in reality, in reality, if you took away the uh, first five or six minutes of the NFC Championship game last year when they fell behind 21 nothing. From then on, the other 55 minutes of that football game might have been the best football I've seen a team play in a long time. If you just take those five minutes away, the Cowboys have, would have won four Super Bowls in a row. And, 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 and counting. That's right. they keep winning. <laughs> and counting. They, they, are, they are one of the great football teams in NFL history. And now the Rams, they uh, had a pretty good season after coming off 4-12, and 7-9. Just your assessment of the whole season. I, you know, they suffered... Uh, uh, they suffered because they got off to the great start and then and then collapsed and ended up right about where we thought they would be. I, I, I remember at the beginning of the year everyone saying, boy, you know, if they got to 500, if they did an 8-8, eight eight, that'd be a nice, a nice adjustment, a really nice progressive uh, piece of work. And, and they got off to the great start and then they fell apart and everybody, you know, the sky is falling and started running around. The Rams need, uh, the Rams need a couple of good years uh, drafting. Uh, they can make some headway with, with free agency, but I, I, the Rams are still two years away, I think, from being a, a pretty good football team. And they got to start with a quarterback. Right. Now, do you think Neil O'Donnell or free agent, one of those guys, who do you think they might look for this year? Oh, I, I think, uh, you know, Neil O'Donnell is, uh, is, a, is a pretty good quarterback, and, and he, is a, uh, uh, he is a guy that, uh, that will make you instantly better thing I like about Neil is that um, he doesn't, you know, as you hate to say this on the heels of the uh, Super Bowl, but he normally doesn't throw a lot of interceptions. He's a pretty, uh, a pretty steady, he's not a risk taker, he's a, a pretty good QB. Uh, you know, I would prefer to see the Rams draft somebody. You know, if you really want to get it done, that's the way you get it done. You, like draft, you draft an Aikman, you draft a Bledsoe, you draft a Kerry Collins like they have in, in, in Carolina. Um, you know, I, I think if you want to really have good quarterbacking for the long haul, that's the way to go. Now the Pro Bowl's coming up. ABC's got it. Uh, what's what do you think's going to happen there? And like like what happened with all the receivers? Do you think Isaac Bruce should have been there, or as you said earlier in the year, do you think because he had a great year? He did. But uh, you don't you still don't believe he should have been there, or how's that? No, I, I, the way the Pro Bowl works is that uh, uh, 
you know, normally you don't, the rule of thumb was you don't make it until a year after you deserve it, and then you probably make it for one more year when you don't deserve it. it it's, it's kind of like the delayed reaction. Uh, Isaac Bruce had a, had a phenomenal year. When the voting was going on, you have to understand that, that the people uh, who went to the Pro Bowl in front of him were, were guys who have all gone to the Pro Bowl before. And when you look at their years, it's pretty tough to pick them apart. You know, it's really tough to say that their years were really any worse than Isaac's. You know, you might be down to a catch or two. But, you know, Jerry Rice and Michael Irvin and Chris Carter and Herman Moore all had remarkable years. Now, of the, of the four, I think the guy that Isaac probably had uh, a legitimate shot at replacing was Chris Carter. Now, uh, Herman Moore and, and Michael Irvin and Jerry Rice, I'm sorry, those guys are going. And I think Chris Carter and, and Isaac were battling for that last place, and it's really it's unfortunate. And I know how badly he must feel with that being his, you know, that would have been his first one. Oh, there's so many receivers, though. Brett Perriman, you should just go on and on. This year was a great year for the receivers. Well, it's uh, the league's finally getting what they wanted. Uh, they've liberalized, uh, liberalized, liberalized the uh, the passing rules to the point where uh, why anybody would want to play defensive back, I, I have no idea. Uh, it's astounding when you stop to think about it, uh, how many receivers uh, had uh, three-digit years. Right. It's astounding. It really is. <laughs> I'm not so sure maybe they haven't gone too far. Maybe it ought to be a little harder to catch the ball. It's getting kind of easy. Yeah. yeah but maybe it ought to be a little bit harder. Uh, a 10 reception game now is just another day at the office. Prediction for the Pro Bowl. Uh, it doesn't matter, really. But yeah, it's... Uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, I have the AFC by two. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> you know, that, all I know is uh, the thing about the Pro Bowl is that uh, guys get hurt and then guys win Super Bowls and they decide it's too far to go and all this and all that. And uh, But it's uh, uh, May, last year we caught Barry Switzer eating a hot dog on the sidelines. Maybe we'll have a <laughs> maybe we'll have another piece of excitement this year. Yeah, he might run off with one second left. Maybe. Well, we'll Barry's. <laughs> uh, I think Barry's going to Disney World. He's not going to Honolulu. Hey Dan, thanks a lot for letting us come out and uh, congratulations. And hopefully we'll be up there with you in Canton. That'd be great. All right, thanks. Thanks a lot, Dan. Yeah.